Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network. Half number two between East Texas Baptist University and your Sagu Lions. Uh, coming on the way here in just about a minute and a half. Tim, 42 to 10 the score in favor of the Tigers. Not the hole you want it to be in if you're the Lions. The, the 42 doesn't surprise you. You knew that the Tigers were very capable of putting up those kind of points. Just very disappointed that you've only been able to manage 10, which has you in this huge hole to start out the second half. You will start the second half with the ball, and your odds of coming back are slim right now. You have to watch walk a razor's edge to possibly get there, but as Coach Tristan was saying at the half, you know what? Keep playing. Chip away. Yep. Chip away and keep playing regardless of what the scoreboard says. Just keep on playing. This is the last of your very brief two-game non-conference schedule. Conference play starts next week. That's when the games really, really start counting. You're playing the best offense in the NCAA Division III. Go out and show something in the second half. Even if it isn't a 35-point rally for a win, go out and show something to, sh to show the other teams in the CSFL, hey, we can hang with anybody. We can put together, we can recover from terrible halves. We can always fight to the finish. That's what you've got to prove over the next 30 minutes. You, if you come out and you score, let's say 21 points here in the second half, that's going to turn the head of Arizona Christian Langston. They can score 35, 31 points against this East Texas Baptist team. That's going to definitely turn heads. And, and that's what you've got to do. Again, win, loss, that, that's all almost beside the point. Now, he's looking at some first half stats. Only 184 total yards for the Tigers. That is one of the most stunning stats you will ever see. 42 points on 184 total yards. That goes to show the short fields that they've had to work with. The Lions offense not being able to move at the beginning of the game, giving the Tigers good field position and them scoring quickly on those uh, on those short fields. There you see the penalties. It felt like Sagu had uh, maybe more than that one penalty, but um, it definitely it, it felt like it, untimely. As the co I was think, trying to think of the word that Coach Tristan said, uh, lot, untimely penalties. A lot of untimely penalties in that half that really just kind of, you know, the mistakes you can't make, the kind of mistakes you cannot make in a game like this that that give the Tigers extra downs, that put you behind the chains. As we get set for the kickoff here, in uh, heading here for the second half, still to kick it off for the Tigers is Ryan Travis, who's done a good job all night of getting the ball deep into the Lions territory, not really allowing Carl Morgan except for one instance in getting good returns and good field position for the Lions. That one return did help lead to three of Sagu's points. And they are set here as Travis finally gets the okay from the officials to go ahead and kick off. And it is up and it is another deep one. Morgan taking it down to about the eight yard line, bounce, trying to bounce it to the outside. We saw him cut it to the middle every time and he has walloped, but he's able to stay on his feet, hit hard that time by the coverage team. That was Trinnell Scott on the coverage, able to lay a big hit on Morgan. And now the Sago offense will come out onto the field after again, a half where a lot of those points, too, on the scoreboard, the offense has to take some blame for those, for so many three and outs, the turnovers, putting the defense in bad situations on three different drives the Tigers started inside Sagu's territory. So time for a very different look from this Lions offense. They're going to have the ball on the 20, first and 10. Collins to hand it off to Lowry. Lowry cuts it back and gets four they're going to say about five on the carry. Good cutback that time by the Sagu running back. And that has been a bright spot in this game. J.P. Lowry has still put himself together a very good game. 
Lowry along with Bickham. Bickham's ripped off a couple of eight, nine, ten yarders uh, himself. Sagu's running back duo, the law firm of Bickham and Lowry, as you like to call them. Uh, it's just defi catching. <laughs> definitely turning heads today. Still able to succeed as he gives it on to Lowry for the sweep. He's going to cut it up inside, and he's got enough for the first down. And he keeps churning those legs and moving the pile. Picked up seven on that carry. It's going to be a Lions first down. So gritty after the initial hit. We've seen him do that already several times. Carry defenders beyond the sticks. Uh, fight his way back inside to get to the sticks. See, one of those guys that has a nose for the first down marker. And that's one of those things you really can't you really can't put a number on that. You can't analyze that with a percentage or, or an average. It's just mental to know where the sticks are and get to them. Some guys don't have it. Some guys are always two yards short. You're like, oh, where are you? Where are you? Lowry definitely has it. Collins back to pass out quick to Justin Allen. Almost breaks the tackle, but a good open field tackle that Justin time by Dylan Bowman. Tiger defender, yep, Dylan Bowman. We've been calling his name a lot. He's everywhere. Going to be a short gain of about two, maybe two and a half, but it's going to be a second and eight year. Because if Allen is able to escape from that tackle, he's he's like he's got a first down and more. Collins two out wide to his left. Lowry in the backfield with them. Steve Lawson in the H back. Takes a snap back to pass. Looks like he's going deep. He's looking for his man on the sideline. He cannot pull it in as he was wide open past the defender. That was Malik Golden, the defensive back, out on the field as a receiver this time. He will, dub he will double as a wide receiver and a defensive back. And for that reason, he is so fast and he breaks free, but just drops it. Another drop for the Lions. That is the third really costly drop. That's the most costly because that's a touchdown. If that hits him, in the, if, he, if he corrals that in, he is walking into the end zone for a touchdown. Perfect pass from C.J. Collins. Couldn't throw it any better. Goes nowhere because of another Lions receiver drop. Third and eight, Collins back to pass. He's got to step up in the pocket. And he's going to take off and run. Can they bring him down? They can. He's going to be short by about three, maybe two yards. And do you consider going for it? Frank Tristan says no. It looked, and they send out the punt. It looked like he had Jeremy Carr open. I think the, the linebacker underneath was just offering enough resistance for CJ to not throw it to him. Instead, tries to run for the first down. And yeah, I mean, get punted away here. Uh, no point in turning it over on downs at your own 40. Although the way that uh, Lowry's been running, I don't know, fourth and two, <laughs> brought, that, that's pretty obtainable. Brought down by Ty, uh, Ty Parsons as the kick is up and away. And he kicks it to the other side of the field. It's going to bounce and die just at the 31, 30 and a half yard line. And that's where the Tigers are going to take over. We'll at, see. As another drive that had the potential to go somewhere. Yeah, first down and 10 Tigers. That drop, that drop right there, that was your punt. That was the drop that forced the punt. What should have been a touchdown turns into a, a not a three and out because you got one first down, but you, you hit downs and you punt it. You've had drops, you've had some fumbles, you've had some, some bad penalties. It's just always been one little thing here and there. Drew Smith back to pass, going across the middle of the field again. They scored on this play earlier, and it looks like they may try it one more time. Matt Williams hanging on to the back. Big play to start their first possession in the second half for the Tigers. Yeah, Xavier Gray just great. runs that slant route to perfection. Coming oh, right out, almost more of a post. Yeah. Runs up the line, hits the slant, is two steps in front of, not even a perfect pass, has to go down and get it, and just shakes off. The initial tap, absolutely. Shakes initial off play. Xavier Pittman yep. to get another, really another 25, 30 yards after the initial contact before he's finally brought down. First play for, uh, first down rather for the Tigers, loses a yard on the run. Second and 11 here. Drew Smith still in at quarterback. In the backfield is Haggerty, four wide, back to pass again. Out into the flats, Matt Williams drags him down, but it looks like he's going to have first down yardage, if not just shy, and they are going to motion for the chains to move, and it's going to be first and 10 
from the 11, so they can still get a first down here, Tim. Jeremiah Drake, and just looking at their depth chart, Xavier Gray, Jeremiah Drake, Tariq Bogard, Richard Johnson, they have all had huge catches tonight. So the entire receiving core getting into the action for the Tigers as they're inside the 10-yard line. Back to pass. He's got a man in the corner of the end zone, and that is as easy as it comes. Finds his man Johnson in the corner of the end zone touchdown. for another touchdown pass. As Richard Johnson, I mean, it, he was all alone with his three best friends, the two pylons and the, the S in the end zone. Those are the only people near him at that point. Drew Smith drops it in perfectly and Second touchdown of the game for Johnson. He had that big uh, big run after the catch on that slant in the first half that we saw. That slant route has been the bread and butter Money. for the Tigers tonight as they score again. 10.52 left as you catch the replay here. Drew Smith, he, he's looking the whole way, but there's no telegraphing because he's just that open, all alone, touchdown. Beats Carl Morgan, not something we're used to seeing is that much space between the Sagu senior and a receiver. And you know what? That could just be a byproduct of that deadly slant route. You, you, your eyes start naturally flicking back inside. You're ready for them to cut up the middle of the field, cut up the middle of the field, and then all of a sudden bust it outside. You don't have a chance. And so a team that we told you pregame averaged 50 points a game last year. Not only that, but I didn't even mention this in pregame, averaged 50 points a game, but in their seven wins, averaged 60 points a game. So those three losses brought their average down 10 points because their offense was really kept in check against, well, some great teams like uh, 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 Mary Hart Baylor, who ended up being the D3 national champion last year, yep. defeated them. So their offense got kept in check a few games, but in their seven wins, they averaged 60 points a game. So this is an offense that is untouchable Potent. At, 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 for everybody they play. They are absolutely dominant, and they are showing that here tonight as they have hung 49 points on the board with around 26 minutes still to play in this. And they've made it look easy from time to Absolutely. time. They have just made it look like they are doing it with ease. Carl Morgan to return the kick, looking for some space. Finds a little bit, a flag comes in late, and you got to believe that's going to be against the Lions. We will see what the call is here. 98 times out of 100, that's going to be a block in the back or a hold, and so that'll probably bring the return back inside the 20. We await the official call. During return, holding. Number three, the receiving team. 10 yards, first down. And there is the call, holding against the Lions. As you saw, Quaylon Beckley uh, kind of miming or mimicking what the referee was doing. It seems like everybody knew what the call was going to be there. Like I said, that's one of those. If there's a flag on a punt or a kickoff, if, if it's ever on the kicking team, that's the surprise. That's if you shot, see the yeah. kicking team flagged, it, it's pretty stunning. Sagu takes the ball at the 21, so not quite inside their 20. First play is going to be a handoff to Bickham. Bickham's going to try to bounce it outside and runs into his own player there, Zach Johnson, trying to throw a block, and Bickham just couldn't quite get past him. But a good carry on first down. And this plays right into one of our keys of the game we talked about pregame, about putting the Lions in a hole early. The Lions running game has been working all night but you can't consistently stay with it because you're in such a big hole. You have to throw the ball. Plus, you factor in some of those penalties that you keep having to push you back. The occasional, you know, blown up, bobbled snap, sack. You just can't run all the time. The sweep outside to Bickham, and he has plenty of running room. Runs into the arms of the defender, but they're going to call it right at the line of scrimmage. It looked like he had room to cut up the field there. Yeah, he got stretched out a little bit too far. I thought he might have got up to the 31-yard line, which would have been just enough for a first down. Third down. He's going to get hit and driven back. And he was closer to the 31 yeah, he, as he is driven back by Ty Parsons, who's had a couple of very strong tackles tonight. But instead, they're going to mark him right at the 30. Third and short here for the Lions. Third and one at the 30. Bickham still in the ball game. Two, running, or two receivers right of C.J. Collins going to take the snap and hand it off. Bickham finding the hole, and he busted out wide. Out past the 40, out past the 45. 
Ricky Bickham with another explosive Ricky run. Bickham. Gets the first down and then 15 more on top of it. Anton Clark had to chase him down to bring him down because first Bickham, down if he was able to break loose, was going to be gone. Is the Lions content to keep it on the ground right now? Down 39, you just can't worry about the clock too much. You just got to stick with what is working. And at the moment, that is the running game with Bickham getting his turn on the field at the moment. And this Sagu offense receiving their play from the sideline. Collins with Bickham still in the backfield, two out to his right. He's going to hand it off again. Bickham runs into a, a tough tackle, a hard tackle that time by Ty Parsons again. Uh, we can't call his name possibly any more tonight, Tim. He's, he has been <laughs> stuffed in the middle, and they've been doing a good job of wrapping up the Lions. There hasn't been a whole lot of yards after first contact. You saw Lowry break a couple of tackles, a couple of shoestring tackles. Besides that, if these Tiger linebackers and defensive linemen have gotten a hold of you, wrapped you up, they have not let you loose. Uh, I mean, at the most, you'll be able to you know, muscle forward with Lowry on the field and lean forward for an extra yard or two. But this Tigers defense, a defense, as you mentioned pregame last year, was the weaker side of this team for sure, a bottom 30 defense in Division III NCAA. Bickham takes the handoff from Collins again. He's going to get it just short of a first down. That's going to bring about third and one. And Sagu continues to keep it on the ground here, and it's working. It really is, and, you know, what, whatever they, they do. And now they option to bring Bickham out and bring Lowry in. And that'll be enough for first down. They're actually going to mark him first down to the 43. Generous uh, spot. I, I didn't think they gave him a gener very generous spot a couple of downs ago. They gave him a very generous spot here. I thought he was held up about a yard short, and they gave him two yards beyond the, the chain. So gets a very generous spot, and Lowry checks in. Lowry in the backfield with Collins. It looks like the Tigers are bringing pressure, and CJ tries to get it out to his right to his man, Sam North. He could not get it there. Now it's going to be second and 10 as the incomplete pass. That's where you want to throw a pass there, Tim. They stack the box. They stack the box, but these linebackers are so quick to stay on your receivers. That, that rollout play, CJ has yet to find somebody really open out there. He has to keep on throwing it low because there is just a good, look at no room, no room. And th that one comes in well low. But even if put on the money, who else? It was Dylan Bowman coming in over the top. So it had been wrapped up immediately, maybe even a chance for an interception. Second and 10 play goes off the hands of the intended receiver and intercepted. Derek Shelby couldn't bring it in, and that's going to be brought back. Again, who else? Bowman is there for the play and brings it back past the 50. And, and that's just one of those where you go, hey, you know what? I don't think it's our night. <laughs> you sell it. The play action is perfect. That's the play we saw them trying to drop earlier. We've seen it before. The quick dump off. Just right off the hands. Go ahead and mark that as insanely impactful drop number four. That's just the drop by Shelby hitting him in the hands, bouncing up in the air, and Dylan Bowman. At, you know, I'm starting to wonder if there's not six guys in the Tigers defense <laughs> wearing number eight because somehow he is in on every single play. All over the field, and here we see the Tigers come out in five wide with Drew Smith. Looking to put some more points on the board. I thought they got past the 50. He was just shy. He puts a man in motion. He's going to give it to him. That is a pass. Is he going to run? He's going to get stopped shy of the line of scrimmage. A flag comes flying in. A little too much stretch on that play. Probably going to result in a hold right there in the middle of the field. And when you get that many guys going in one direction, that can happen pretty easily. Should be a fairly easy call here for our officials. Holding. Holding. 62 the offense. 10-yard penalty. Ten yard penalty. First, down. First down. They got Ivan Monson that time with the hold, and then Frank Tristan. We saw him decline a penalty earlier in the game. Going to accept this one. Moving back 10 yards. Make it first and 20. Back to pass to Smith, still five wide. He's going to get it out to the flats, and he's wide open. And he's going to make a man miss and get more. He's going to get about maybe about 16 on that play. 
It's just a game of pitch and catch right now. He found his man out wide. It was Contavious Miller, another one of these quick freshmen. And Bryce Bailey, number nine, is going to get caught out of position here. Just not following him. And then when you give that much space, you know, sometimes it's okay to give a little bit of space underneath and then come in and wrap him up. But when you have that much space, the receiver has time to turn around. He has time to get his footing, put a little juke on you, and that was leads to the yards after the catch. The handoff straight ahead to Haggerty. And he's going to get the first down. He's got plenty of yardage. And just like that. They're going to mark him just a bit oh, shy, just actually. Shy. Wow. Just shy. Third and one. Well, Delonzo well, Freeman, my, my correction on that one. Third and short That's here. Third down. As Freeman remains in the backfield, three wide here for Smith. And he's going to drop back to pass. Looking across the middle, and he gets there early. Does Xavier Pittman. Looked like he was trying to make a play on the ball, but just hit the receiver's body a little early. Yeah, comes in and makes contact with Tariq Bogard. As that's one of those times that the, the broken nature of the play ends up helping the offense because the ball was supposed to be there a little bit sooner. But Drew Smith lets the loose of it a little bit late. Pass interference, Pass interference before, the before the defense. That penalty, that penalty is, a spot, is foul, a spot foul, but an automatic, automatic first, down. first down. So it's going to be a very rare two-yard pass interference penalty. But as Tristan said, in detrimentally key moments. Third down, another, another third down penalty. We've seen a fourth down penalty. They just always seem to happen at the worst moment. Out in the flat, he finds his man. He's got a swarm of lions around him. Smith finds Jeremiah Drake, who was in motion, caught the ball the in Drake. stride and tackled by about four or five Lions, including Carl Morgan. Morgan. Carl Morgan has been another little bit of a silver lining tonight. Got out of position a few times. When you have this many points scored, it's going to be unlikely that your name goes untouched. But he's shown some, some of what we know makes him so great. He had a couple, especially early on, when this was still a very tight game, he was out there. Ball start. Ball start. Nine. Nine. The offense. offense. Five-yard five penalty. penalty. Still first down. Still first down. Correction. Correction. Second down. Second down. We see Xavier Gray gets caught on a false start. He's going to make it second and 14. Three out to his left for Smith. Running back and behind him is Freenum, or Freeman next to him, rather, in the backfield. Back to pass to Smith. He steps up, trying to elude some defenders. He's still looking to throw. He's going to get brought down by Kobe Roach. The, the, the safety on the blitz is able to track down Drew Smith as he gets taken down on the Lions bench. Great pursuit from behind. Just stays on him. Hustling, hustling, hustling. Gets Wrapping him up. Yep. And nicks the ankles. And he brought him down for a little bit of a loss. So might, might go down as a sack. Might, might go down as a sack. We'll have to see the exact measurement of whether he actually was able to get back to the line of scrimmage or not. Smith back to pass on third and long, looking in the flat, and it's ooh, high. Ooh, ooh. Misses his man, but there is, uh, looked like Elijah, Elijah Pruitt. Pruitt. Yep. Yeah. If that yeah. ball would have sailed around six inches higher, Elijah Pruitt was going to take that to the house. So the Lions defense gets off the field after the big pass play to get the ball down into Sagu territory. The Lions defense puts together a stop, and with five minutes left, they're going to give the ball back to their offense unscathed. Sam Northey back to return this punt. Ryan Travis to kick it away. He does low line drive kick. It's going to get fielded in about the seven yard line. He's going to cut up field, trying to find a lane. Can't quite find anything. Fights forward to about the 17 yard line. To his left on that play. It looked like he briefly has some daylight here. Right? See right here, right there, but he bumps into his own player. That throws his rhythm off. If he could have been able to make a clean cut and head to his left, he would have had some yards in no, front of him. But some decent punt returns tonight from Samuel Northey. He has looked pretty solid out there. The freshman. Made a couple of really good punt returns, and it's good to see how he trusts his hands to make those catches. And these have been all high-pressure punts. They, the Lions have not been started with good field position. He's been fielding all of these inside his 20, sometimes inside his 10. So some high pressure punt returns for the freshman, and he, is, he has shown. Collins back to pass, fakes one way, he's rolling out to his right. And he's looking for Roderick Brown Jr. Can't quite find him on that rollout play. 
which has not worked tonight. The rollout play just has not worked. And just give credit to the linebackers, the DBs, the safety, that entire defense. There's always somebody pressuring Collins from behind. He doesn't really, well, this play, he had a little bit more time than usual, but there's nobody there. There's nobody there. There, there is not two inches of space between any Lions receiver and any Tigers defender on that play. They have just been able to shut down that rollout play. Second and 10 now from their own 18. Collins, too wide to his right. J.P. Lowry in the backfield. And he's going to hand it off to the big running back, and he's going to run right into that defensive line, but still falls forward for about four Lowry yards after the initial contact is J.P. Lowry. And he always finds a way. That looks like nothing. It looks like nothing. It looks like one, one yard, maybe two, but he always finds a way to make you glad you handed it off to him. Third and six here for the Lions as they face another tough third down. Not the ideal yardage you want here. You've not been able to get, you've not been able to get six yards too many times tonight through the air. We'll see if they hand it off. They don't. Collins back to pass. Maybe a design screenplay. It, it gets busted. Collins is going to have to take off and just ducks out of bounds. Smart play by Collins as the play was just busted from the get, very get go able to spin out and avoid, avoid the sack. As he is just getting, whew, that, that was close. If he isn't able to make that spin out, he is going to be brought down for the sack on that play. But it results in another three and out for the Lions. They will send the punt unit back onto the field. Monty almost has to go through his hands. He gets the kickoff, no flag as he goes down hard. It's going to be brought in by the speedy freshman. He's going to take it up the sideline. He's still got room to run. If he cuts it back here, we could see a touchdown. He's got one man to beat. Can he beat Monteith? Makes the move, Monteith can't make the tackle, and that's going to be a punt return for a touchdown. Contavious Miller all the way across the field beats everyone. And beat everybody twice. <laughs> He had to run so far. He beat every player on the team twice. That is about going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 60-yard punt return. We'll see exactly where the, the ball was fielded here and get the exact, the exact yardage here. Fields at about the 40-yard line. That's a huge, maybe 60-plus yard return. 60-plus yard return. But when you factor in the fact that he fielded it all the way on the right side of the field, and then weaves all the way to the sideline, has to weave all the way back to the left side of the field. Well over 100 yards. Yeah, he probably ran about 120, 130 yards to get those 60 yards. On for the extra point to make it 56 to 10 is Ryan Travis. Snap is good, kick is up, and it is indeed good. And East Texas Baptist goes up 56 to 10 here in quarter number three. And they've shown they can do it just about any which way at this point. They've had they've pounded in the end zone on a couple of short runs. They've had big pass plays. They've had short pass touchdowns. And now an electrifying punt return for a touchdown as a, another Lions three and out immediately results in points for the Tigers as ETBU has now hung 14 on the board here in the third quarter to push their lead to 46. It'd be nice if Carl Morgan has a little motivation after that. Maybe decides to get one of his own. Ma match one for one. <laughs> Brian Travis to kick off for ETBU as usual, has done a good job of getting the, uh, at least the kicks down inside the 10. Most of the time inside the five. We'll see if he continues to do it. No really wins, so no help for Travis. As he makes his way, the kick is up, and it's another good one. Morgan has to go back to the two-yard line and fields it. We'll see what he tries to do here. Will he... He's going to be met by two of the ETBU covers team and only gets it to about the 16. Tried to stretch it to the far side of the field and the blocking. Tim, it just wasn't there. I think he's tried to stretch it to the far side of the field a little too often. The Tigers are picking up on that tendency. 
you know, you do pick up on that tendency the ninth time you punt. Looking at some NCAA score updates, OU and Ohio State in just a huge showdown for this early of a season. OU currently leading in that game, 17-13. I got my eyes on that game. USC over Stanford at the moment. Clemson beating Auburn 14-6. And Texas A&M in a fight with Nichols. Man, that is a shocker. Nothing's been going right for Texas A&M since the third quarter of Sunday night, that's for sure. <laughs> Collins hands it off on first down to Lowry, and he gets about two yards, maybe three on that carry. Ricky Bickham on the run. Or Ricky Bickham, rather, not J.P. Lowry. One of the few times we've seen Bickham Jeremiah swallowed Simpson. up for less than eight yards on a carry tonight. He's done a good job of getting around the corner and picking up the extra yardage. But this time... There was just nowhere to go. But that was a straight ahead run. Not usually what you see from Bickham. He's always looking to make a cut. That time he was just locked in straight ahead and picks up three. Double play action, maybe try to get the defense flowing one way. Collins now fakes the run out to the screen. He finds Justin Allen, has to bobble it and bring it in almost twice and gets gobbled up back to the original line of scrimmage. The ball was thrown a little bit behind Allen. The bobble delayed the play just enough that by the time he had it, any blocker in front of him had already been thwarted, loses two and brings up a third and nine. Lions offense looking to get their play here. The last thing you want to do is have to punt it from inside your 20 again. Luckily, their punt returner is very winded right now. I would imagine. Three plays ago, he ran that back for a touchdown. Collins with Bickham in the backfield, two out to his left. Gonna take the snap and hand it off to Bickham, and he swallowed up a good tackle that time on the blitzing number 12, Zach Walker. The D lineman looked like he dropped, looked like he dropped back pre-play, and then blitzed after that and made the tackle on Bickham. And that brings up a fourth down. Yeah, and this is not where you want to be if you're the Lions. Read that one perfectly. On teeth, back to punt again. He's been a busy man today. Definitely busier than the Lions wanted him to be. And the punt is off, and it is going to be fielded at about the 50. And he's looking to cut it upfield. There is a flag on the play. As new return man this time, this was Tariq Bogard, the, the senior receiver. Tariq Bogard on the return. You would imagine the yards he picked up Probably coming oh back God. with the flag on the field. Although they have placed the ball and the flag must have inadvertently come out because there is no call. No call at all. So the Tigers will set up at the Lions 34. Another drive beginning in Sagu territory. And the handoff this time gets swallowed up this time. We got a new quarterback in there. Brian Baca is back in the game. And he was tackled on the play by Jordan Hall, a freshman linebacker. Jordan Hall, second down. And Baca, every time he's in there, it looks like they run the no huddle. They want to keep it up tempo. Baca hands it off again to his man. Patience being shown by the running back, Delonzo Freeman. And gets it about. Two, maybe three yards on that carry, bring it up a third and about seven. Lions do a good job winning up front, and that's something, again, that they have not been consistently beat on tonight. They have been able to win in the trenches a number of times. Back to passes, Baca across the middle, got a guy wide open. He finds his man, Cameron Goodledge, who's had a couple of big catches in this game. And he's brought down, but not after he gets a first down. What Sagu has not been able to find an answer for is that slant. That slant to the middle of the field has just been unbeatable. Hand it off again to Freeman. He fights his way forward for about five. Initial contact was made maybe about two and a half uh, after about two yards, and he just able to fight his way forward for another yard or two. That's going to bring the end of the, th that's going to bring the third quarter to an end rather with ETBU still leading 56 to 10 in a blowout. The game that they have now hung 28 unanswered points on the board. And really when you go back to it, 
They led 14 to nothing. The Lions cut the lead to 14 to seven. And I'm sorry, 21 to seven. So since then, they've put 35 to three up on the board. So since the Lions found their way back into this game, and when you talk about turning points, when you talk about turning points of a ball game, you know, when it's 56 to 10, obviously you can point to probably 15 or 20 things, but there's that one thing that stands out when you're down 14 nothing, driving for what looked like was going to be a touchdown. The ball gets snapped poorly. You turn it over and you lose the ball. The next drive, and the direct drive that followed for the Tigers ended up with the Tigers punting the ball away, but you ran into the kicker, roughed the kicker, gave them a free set of downs, which led to another touchdown. So it went from what looked to be 14 to seven to 21 nothing. And the Lions have been playing pure catch up ever since. And they really haven't even gotten close. The closest Scott after that was 21 to seven. The and that's been it. There you see the Oklahoma Panhandle State University Aggies down 34-14 to the Texans. And that score down there, another CSFL opponent for the Lions, newly added this year to the CSFL. As the snap is taken and handed off, but he's swallowed quickly for a loss of two as Baca remains in there at quarterback, Number handing it off to Number Freeman. Five. Looks like Matt Leiter come in, came in with the primary Number tackle. Number Third and well long. as Jordan Coleman. Third and long here for the Tigers. Third and nine to be exact. Baca takes the snap. We're going to get a whistle here. And it's going to be a false start against ETBU. False start. False start. 72. 72. Offense. Offense. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Third, down. Third down. Third down. Going to take it to about third and 14 for the Tigers. And I'm trying to reach time, but I feel like the Lions have actually been able to stop the Tigers twice before when the drive actually started in their end of the field. So the Lions defense, while it's hard to say, they're not getting an A tonight, that's for sure, with 56 on the board. There have been moments that they've shown that they can hang with and make the big plays. Baca sends Freeman in motion. He's hit as he throws, and it's picked off. Malik Golden, the freshman, taking it down the sideline, and he's got speed. He takes it out past the 25 to about the 27. Hit as he throws was Baca, and the Lions finally get that turnover they've been gunning for all game. Yeah, Baca is going to get the pressure from Leiter here. Ball floats in the air just a little bit too much, and Malik Golden atones a little bit for that drop touchdown earlier, intercepts the Tigers in the end zone. And so a drive that starts in Sagu territory, the Lions defense comes up big, forces the turnover, and now they get to go onto the field with a chance to just, you know, get something going. Like I said, you got a quarter to play now. You're 14 minutes away from conference play. Start putting together some positivity. Start putting together so, some momentum heading into next week's game. Collins in the shotgun, hands it off to Lowry. Lowry cuts it up inside for about a yard, maybe two. Looked to maybe get it outside, but saw nothing there. Cut it back inside for two, two and a half. Second down. Just not a whole lot of room to run. Even Lowry, you know, with what he can do when there's not that much space, there's, there's just nothing you can do. I mean, you can't. You can break one tackle, you can break two. If you've got four guys on you, there's not the best running back in the world can't get out of that. Second and eight, Collins fakes to Lowry, rolling out to his right. He's got a man down in the corner, looking for Roderick Brown, incomplete, a little too wide. Even if he gets both hands on it, I don't think he comes down in bounds with it. I am not sure if we have seen a completion on those rollout plays this game. I cannot recall a completion. There has always been a Tiger there providing okay pressure and the balls just have not been put in the good in, in, in the right area in, in this spot where the receiver can get up and make the catch facing another third and long here third and eight for the Lions and they have not done well on third downs here in the second half especially in their own territory a little bit better field position than we've seen the last couple of drives they are on their own 29 and that just goes to show you how bad their field <laughs> position has been I have to say. Collins fakes it to Lowry, back to pass. 
Looking in the seam, he's got Brown. Brown holds it in, and he's got it down past the 40. A good pitch and catch that time from Collins to Brown. Just finds that little bubble area that the Tigers were no longer covering. And Roderick Brown has put himself together a pretty solid game today. Obviously, he's not going to care about his stats too much with what's on the scoreboard, but Great Brown, pass by Brown Lowry, and Bickham have all had their moments tonight on offense. And it converts a big third down, like you were saying. Absolutely, yep. They have not been converting those this game, and that is a big one to get out of your own territory. Collins hands it off to Lowry. Lowry looking to bounce it outside. He does. Escapes one tackler, gets about four on the play after that initial contact. Bringing up about a second and six. Zach Walker with the tackle. You see the change of direction. We talk about the change of direction for, for Bickham. Lowry for a bigger back. It's, it's a little bit slower, but the thing about Lowry is if he changes direction, you know he's right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the old game, let's make a deal, pick a door, any door. <laughs> Lowry always knows which door to pick. He's always making smart decisions. Collins finds Roderick Brown on the screen. He spins away from the tacklers. He got some speed. Can he get to the end zone? He can! Roderick Brown Jr. escapes two or three tackles on the screen and takes it all the way to the house for a touchdown lion. That is all Roderick Brown Jr. A little harmless screen pattern just inside. Roger Brown slanting to the middle of the field. Looks like he is going to be wrapped up for certain. Try to see who he breaks the tackle for here. Slips out of Keonis Williams' hands and is gone. Roger Brown has some breakaway speed. We were saying just a moment ago, Roger Brown has had his moments tonight and that is the best one by far. That is probably the best play period for the Lions tonight. And what has otherwise not been a night they were looking forward to. TH on for the extra point, and as usual, it is good. 11 of 11 on the year for the Sagu place kicker, Talon Pamung. And Sagu gets seven back, 56 to 17 now. Like I said, just, you know, forget the scoreboard. You got a whole quarter left. Start putting together some momentum. Roderick Brown had a couple of great catches last week, had the one touchdown that almost looked like that, but on the corner of the field, caught it, got spun around and is sprinted to the end zone. This time he's wrapped up in the middle of the field, breaks Williams' tackle, and is gone. And you always can tell how fast a guy is when you get the perspective of four or five other players around him trying to catch him. Sometimes if they're open the field, you really can't judge it as well. When there's four guys trying to catch you and none of them has a shot, that just shows how fast Brown is. And he improves the scoreboard for the Lions. Had the big third down catch, getting open to the middle of the field, and the touchdown. And now Hamung will line up for the kickoff. The last time we saw him kick off, it was that really short pooch kick that ended up giving uh, the Tigers great field position up at their 43. That was the, the final blow, really. You were down 28 to 10. Yeah. They ended up with great field position, made it 35, 10 and two plays. You went three and out, they made it 42, 10 and two plays. So that, you, you were kind of liking where things were going a little bit at that point. So let's see what he opts to do here with 12 minutes left. Long among TH to kick it off for the Lions. He's gonna try to kick it deep, and he does. Gets it fielded about the six yard line. Let's see how the Lions coverage team can do. Brought out, bounces it to the outside, and here we go, this is trouble. And he bounces it back inside. That is Maurice Morris. Looked like he had the outer lane, but bounces it back inside, or cuts it back inside, rather, and gets it up to the 40. Tackle made by Darian Carter. Does a good job getting back around. And yeah, they, you know, we haven't seen them make a whole lot of kickoff returns because they haven't had to worry about it too often. But when they have, they have been able to return them very effectively. You know, I'm, I'm at Jason Garrett press conferences every week and he talks about the three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams. ETBU has won all three phases unquestionably. Baca fakes the throw and takes off. 
It looked like that slant he was looking for wasn't there. Very wisely is able to tuck it and go. We saw earlier uh, what they called an incomplete pass from Baca. As you see here, the pump fake again. We saw him fumble something like that earlier. And that looked like it might have been what it was. It almost looked like it might have been slipping a little bit of his hand, so he decided to tuck it. And Second and no 10, game. Baca gets it out, slings it out to the outside. And he's able to, he finds his man, and he's able to get it past the first down marker. He found his receiver on the outside. Cameron Goodlett on the screen pass and just used those blockers and got 12 for the first down. These receivers are so quick. It's just these slant routes, the quick routes to the corner. Oh! Carl Morgan was thinking about a pick six there. He absolutely was. He read he that one. Went to that well a few too many times. Carl Morgan, you see that? He's taking a step back. And if he hadn't been a half step further back, he broke in time. He would have got a hold of that one. That's pick six. All written all over it. Second and ten here now for the Tigers. Baca still in a quarterback. Would have been Carl Morgan's second pick six of the season. Baca hands it off. And the running back is brought down quickly after a gain of about Jeremiah half a yard. Robertson Jeremiah Robertson on the run. Back by Kobe Roach. Kobe Roach comes in. Is the one to kind of grab and hold the shoestrings, wrap them up. The safety playing in the box. Can play kind of both, the safety as well as the weak linebacker, the wheel linebacker rather. And he's in the box right now, playing that linebacker position. Baca back to pass on third down, tucks it, decides to run. Can he get the first down? Looks like he does have enough as the Lions lunging to try to take down the backup quarterback for the Tigers and just could not get a hold of him. Fights through an arm tackle here. First down, Tigers. Unable to get to the quarterback and just a nice little juke move as it's Aiden Estrada who grabs a hold of the jersey but unable to wrap him up. Baca hands it off to Robertson. Robertson spins his way, tries to keep going after that initial spin, but they're going to rule him down after a gain of about four. Tackled by Jordan Hall. Bringing up a second and six here for Baca and this Tigers offense. In motion is his receiver. He's going to go back out. Baca hands it off to Robertson. Robertson. Gets upended that time by safety Matt Williams, but gets a good chunk back, another five yards, and that's going to be third and short. Another chance for the Sagu defense okay. to get a victory. Baca takes the snap and hands it off again. Robertson's going to get enough for the first down. And here we see them just pounding the rock as they get another first down on the ground. Damage this drive almost exclusively done by the run. And this is something the Lions have not failed at tonight, is winning the battles in the trenches and these runs up the middle. As, as lopsided as this score is, if the Tigers have been, been able to establish that run game up the middle like they are right now earlier on in the game, it could be much worse. The Zagu's defensive line has been able to stand strong pretty consistently, but pretty much every time they are able to get the stop, they just go back to the slant. Mbaka hands it off again. This time he's got his man Haggerty. Haggerty jumps over some Lions and fights forward for the yardage. He's going to be brought down about two yards shy of a first down. That's going to bring up third and short here for the Tigers offense. But uh, we've seen them as a Tigers player goes down. Looked like he tried to get back up on his feet and just could not put any pressure on his leg. That's Ivan Monzon. Is you see him clutching his knee right there, yeah. just to kind of pile up there on the defensive and offensive line in the trenches. And that's always scary. He's going to get some assistance to get off the field again. That is Ivan Monson, junior from Marshall, Texas. He will get up and off the field. Gingerly off the field with that. We'll hope, we hope he's OK. One of the dominating offensive lineman really all night for this Tigers offense has not allowed really any pressure on the quarterback and the running game has been solid really all night especially this drive and he's a big part of it that one of those junior leaders for East Texas Baptist offensive line has definitely worn down the Sagu defensive line and yeah not much pressure on either ETBU quarterback whether it was Drew Smith or Brian Baca 
they have had time to throw. Not that they really need it, though. Their receivers get open so quick, they don't need the three, four seconds for the play to develop. It's always there for them. Third and two, Baca hands it off and brought down quickly. Landon Jones able to sniff that one out and bring up a fourth down. Haggerty on the run. And will we see the first field goal down attempt, the on, the, attempt on the night for East Texas fourth Baptist? Down. It looks like we're going to. Yeah, they're going to walk him out there, make sure that everybody's ready for their next game. Check the kicker and what's going to be a, about a 25-yard field goal. Kicker Ryan Travis is eight for eight on extra points tonight. Kick is up, snap is good. Kick is good, and he gives East Texas Baptist a 59 to 17 lead on his first field goal of the night. Good job to come out, almost getting no work other than those extra points to put up a pretty good field goal attempt. Well, he's had plenty of kickoffs. Yeah, that's, that's true. He's, he's about to have his 11th kickoff right here. So he's, he's, his legs shouldn't be too rusty. He's loose. I'll say that. So now Sagu will have 7.52 left on the clock. They trail here 59-17. You really like that last drive, though. That last drive was what you wanted to see. So, some good plays on the ground. Receivers making big plays. That's the kind of action that I really expected to see more throughout this game. I was expecting a higher scoring shootout. The 59 for East Texas Baptist, I think the reason we're not even being hard on our defense is because we know we aren't stunned by that 59. We knew that that was a distinct possibility. The Lions offense just has not clicked today, especially not like they did last week, putting up 63 points. They looked so strong last week. They have a chance now to, to continue the momentum of the last drive and lead that momentum into next week's game, which they're probably looking forward to right now. Get that chance. You, whenever you lose a game like this, you want to be right back on the field to prove that this was this was the fluke and not, not the win the week before. We're going to see this one fielded by Roderick Strong for the first time tonight on kickoffs. He's got the speed. He's looking to hit the corner. He's going to get it up past the 30, and that's going to be about it. As we see, really, the, the speed to get all the way across the field from Roger Strong. Or, or rather, uh, Talk about Jeremiah Simpson, not now, Roger. Malik Golden? Malik Golden, that's what I'm, I'm thinking, Roderick Brown. Uh, Malik <laughs> Golden on the return. Used to call him Roderick's name all night long, and it's just stuck in my head. You know what? You called the first 10 kickoffs well. Uh, <laughs> you're 10 for 11. That's still a very good average. Collins remains in the game, 7.42 left to go. Yeah, in this one, he's got two out to his right. He's gonna hand it off to Bickham. Bickham tries to find some room up the middle and nothing doing there for about two yards Bickham was Bickham. You can tell how important this momentum is to Coach Tristan. You are down by 42 points. Oh, and you've got Ricky stopped. Bickham out there. You got Jeremy Carr out there. You have CJ Morgan Collins Garcia. out there. He wants this offense to end this game on a high note. He's not putting in his backups, which might be the quote unquote wiser thing to do, but he is determined to finish this game on some momentum. Second and seven here for Collins. He sends his man Donovan Jean in motion. He's gonna hand it off again. Bickham makes a cut back inside. He's got some room. Bickham carrying defenders with him and he keeps it moving. Bickham breaking tackles left and right. Huge run by Ricky Bickham. What an absolutely amazing run by Bickham. And let me tell you, if he breaks that last tackle and has gone, that's Sports Center top 10 material right there. <laughs> He's wrapped up at the 45, 50, still fighting, and then somehow spins out of that. And he had, if, if he's not sitting there, finally making the tackle, number 21, Malik Mason. If he is not waiting, waiting there for Bickham, Bickham's going to take that to the house. Bickham again, bouncing it outside, cuts it back up inside for about four, maybe four and a half yards on that carry, bringing up about a second and six after that brilliant run by Bickham. Like I said, Bickham, Lowry, and Roderick Brown have all still been able to put together very solid nights in an otherwise lopsided affair. 
As we approach the six minute mark and the Lions are in Tiger territory. Collins second and six. Bad snap still gets the handoff to Bickham and Bickham meets a wall of Tiger defenders. And still able to eke out right? maybe three yards, but Collins, a good job to bring in that bad snap and still get the handoff. Not the most pristine snapping tonight. We've seen some issues. On both sides, really, yeah. And, and now Devo went out for a little while. And so, oh. Devo is the guard. He's the center last yes. year. You're thinking last year. <laughs> Dane Macklin is the center now for the Lions. Fantastic center. Uh, but Devo going where they need him, playing guard. He's still in the game. We saw him go down with an injury earlier, but he's, he's gutted out and he's still in the game. Third and three now for the Lions. But you're right, we've seen snapping issues on both sides of the ball. And those impact the whole play. They blow the whole play up from the start. Collins hands it off to Lowry. They seem content to keep pound on the rock, and they've done so almost this entire second half. Lowry, As Lowry gets himself four when he needed three, gets the first down for the Lions. Uh, just under five, just about five minutes left to play here. Quarter number four. It also doesn't hurt in a game that's obviously at this point a lost cause. Go ahead and pad the stats of those guys. Uh, you have two running backs that theoretically could both hit a thousand yards this season. So go ahead and and let them keep nudging those numbers up. All Both seniors. Again in the shotgun, two out wide to his left. Lowry in the backfield with him. Collins takes the snap, fakes it. He's going to pass it, finds his man to the outside. That's Sam Worthy, the fine punt returner. Gets himself down, gets himself about nine after the quick pass from Collins. And that's one of the first times that we've seen Sammy Norley actually out uh, running routes. I think we saw it briefly last week when the game was safely in hand at the end of the fourth quarter. It shows how deep this receiver core is because a, a guy is quick and, and, and can really change direction as quickly as Norley, as we've seen on punts. We haven't even mentioned that Bryant Dotson is out tonight. Bryant Dotson was not able to play tonight, and he has not played at all tonight. Obviously, he was declared out before this game. So, yeah, that's how deep this receiving core is is that we really haven't even noticed that. Bickham with the carry, cuts it back inside, runs into his own lineman, but still able to get past the first down marker. Got about five and brings Sagu inside the red zone. Here with about 347 left to play in the fourth quarter. Offensively, the real problems have been you've had a couple of drops, but ultimately it's just been on those rollout plays. Those rollout plays that did work for you more effectively last week, the Tigers have been all over them this entire game. Like we were saying earlier, I actually don't recall if we have seen a completion on the rollout play. And since they've moved away from those and they've started running and running seam routes, slant routes, staying in the middle of the field, letting CJ stay in the pocket, they've been moving the ball more effectively. Bickham in the backfield is going to take the carry. He slips, loses his footing, and gets tackled for no gain, bringing up second and ten. And there we see... The very rare, really missed footing of Ricky Bickham. That's inevitable when you're making that much of a cut, when you're that quick. Slipping and falling is going to be inevitable at <laughs> some point. We well, made it this long without seeing it tonight. Not bad for Ricky Bickham. Under three minutes to play here in fourth quarter. Sagu with the chance just to, like I said, it'd be nice to go ahead and end this game saying you put together two strong touchdown drives, back to back. Collins handing it off. Oh, he keeps it out to his right, looking for his man. And he, fortunate for Collins, it was not intercepted. Looking for his man in the corner of the end zone. That was, it was Malik Mason who got the tip. And then Hardy Hill was coming up from behind. He lays the hit on, I believe it was Jeremy Carr. But if Hardy Hill had stepped back a little bit more, he might as well make that interception in the end zone. It's going to bring up a third and ten for the Lions. Lions awaiting offensive coordinator Sam Harold's Sam Harold's play call here. Play clock is under five, so they get the snap off pretty quick. They do get the snap off. Collins back to pass. Pressure in his face immediately has to get rid of it. Throws it into triple coverage. We're going to get a flag out here. That looked more in the neighborhood of illegal contact. They're, they're, they're calling pass interference. They are going to signal pass interference on Roderick Brown. And that'll... Roderick Brown being the, the offended party, not the, <laughs> not the offender. That'll put the ball in. Look, it if it's a spot foul, it should be inside the five-yard line. The officials 
straighten things out here, see what the call is. Pass interference, 24 of the defense. Spot foul, automatic, first down. So it's gonna be Hardy Hill who is assessed the penalty. And what was gonna bring up a fourth down for the Lions is that'll be a first and goal at the five. He's had a chance to close this game off on back-to-back -back touchdown drives where you've looked a lot better and you just kind of wish, oh man, if we could have, if we could have had this going earlier, this, this could be a very different game right now, but it's good to see this, this kind of offensive momentum come together here at least. Collins hands it off to Bickham. Bickham's gonna try to bounce it outside. Gets down to about the one. A good effort by Bickham on first down uh, from about the five to fight his way through contact to get down to the one yard line. And we're gonna see again here where he's gonna go around the corner and the initial contact is at the five. He just sheds Ben Ashton right off. And it's finally gonna be Jeremiah Simpson who brings him down. Looks to be inside the one yard line. Nose of the football, the, the, the back end of the football is right on the one. So they are inside the one yard line as we are under two minutes to play. Collins with two out wide to his left. Bickham still in the backfield. And a bad snap, Collins can't pick it up and he just falls on it. And he's gonna be down at the 17 yard line. And as Sagu is driving and down to the one after Bickham carries the load, just like that, a loss of 16. Sometimes it's just good to see a microcosm of the game in one play. <laughs> Third and go second and goal on inside the one. Yeah, Collins can take it in, Bickham can take it in. You just know this is going for a touchdown. The snap goes wide and your shot to, to make the scoreboard look a little bit better just got a whole lot tougher. It's now third and goal from the 17. And again, this is very indicative of this game. The running game has been working for you all night long. And then a negative play means you can't go back to it. Play game, offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. Still third down. And Sagu takes the delay of game as they could not get a play in time and look to just take as many seconds off this clock as they can after that botched snap. And it's third and 22. That's gonna be something they need to fix up next week. You cannot have those bad snaps. Clock keeper. The penalty includes a 10 second runoff as the clock was running inside of a minute. Please reset the game clock to 32 seconds. And there you hear it. I don't know if that's right. The clock was already stopped. 32. Oh, no, I just guess it wasn't stopped because they were just in no hurry to run the next play. Yeah, fell so I guess, it, I guess yep. it is correct. You just, I guess I'm confused because you just absolutely never hear about a delay of game when the clock is inside of two minutes and running right. like that. Yep. That would actually inflict the penalty. Collins back to pass, lobs it up, and it's going to be intercepted in the end zone looking that time for Zach Johnson, and it's picked off by Denzel Grundy in the corner of the end zone to end this game. And it looks like East Texas Baptist is gonna walk away with a 59 to 17 victory after they essentially just run out the clock. Correction, that was number 24, Hardy Hill, not Denzel Grundy. Hardy Hill all over the field tonight, the, ju the junior able to make the game ending play essentially for East Texas Baptist. Hardy Hill was the one that was whistled on the pass interference call a moment ago. And so the Lions denied a chance at a little scoreboard whitewashing in the closing seconds as the shotgun snap goes wide and then delay of game, then Collins just desperately tossing it into the end zone. And now it'll just be victory formation time for the Tigers. Kneel down, and they will move to 1-0 on the season. And it's Drew Smith back in the game to take the victory formation. So he kneels down. He's going to get some negative rushing yards. <laughs> and the Tigers move to 1-0 on the season. Your Sagu Lions will fall to 1-1. And, and the clock will reset immediately for the Lions.
as conference play begins next Saturday, they will be traveling to Tyler, Texas to take on Texas College. I guess that's the one relief. That's the team you've had a lot of success against over the past few years. And you will look to try to forget this one as quickly as possible as a game we knew was going to be a challenge. We knew this was going to be a momentous challenge going up against a team as talented as East Texas Baptist University, an offense as potent as this. You know, the, again, best offense in NCAA Division III last year. They have shown that they are hardly missing a beat at the moment. Looking at some of your final stats here, 486 total yards. The Lions do manage 175 yards on the ground, so still a very solid rushing game for the Lions. Neither team all that great on third downs, but East Texas Baptist didn't have to convert too many throughout the game. Our stats actually show even first downs at 21. A lot of those had to come in that fourth quarter on the ground, though. A lot of conversions there we saw with Bickham and, Rowley, and, 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 Bickham and Lowry, rather, uh, there in the second half when the Lions seemed to be content with trusting the big guys up front and running the rock. So the Sagu Lions fall to one and one. Like I said, a game we knew was going to be a challenge. We knew this was going to be a big uphill challenge. Not the most stunning of results with what you knew was going to be coming. But you, you see a lot of places to really improve. This this result is not this because you were so clearly beaten by a team that, that was much that was that much better than you. You see a lot of spaces where, wow, we could have been done this so much better. We could have been so much better in this spot. So I'm sure Frank Tristan, as he addresses his troops right now at the end of the game, will have lots of developments coming. And as you see the upcoming schedule, Texas College and Texas Wesley, and that, that's the bright spot for you. Two, yep. A team that you know you're really good against and a team who's just trying to get started. And boy, do they need to gear up fast because the next time we are here at Lumpkin Stadium, Arizona Christian, a team who has yet to lose in CSFL play. And they very well could keep that streak alive until they come here. I would imagine that they, I would not bet against it, let's say that. No, no, no. Now, last year, Sagu played Arizona Christian to a 27-21 loss, so that could be an amazing game. That'll be September 30th, the next time we are back here. The next two games on the road in Tyler and Fort Worth, and of course, for those games, stay tuned to our social media, Sagu Sports Net, Sagu Sports Network, to bring you all the latest updates for how the Lions are doing on the road. As for the broadcast schedule, take it away, Adam. You don't have to wait till September 30th until to watch Sagu Sports Network. This upcoming Monday, 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock, our first soccer broadcast of the year. 2 o'clock, again, the women's game, as usual, and then right after, maybe a little bit after 4 o'clock, the men's game will kick off. So come on out. Either come to Waxahachie, the stadium right or the the field right behind uh, the the um, the Schaefer Center to watch the men and women play, or go ahead and tune into the Sagu Sports Network. Two o'clock and four o'clock, September 11th, this upcoming Monday, for Sagu Soccer. For Kristen Urban, our sideline reporter, for my partner Tim, I've been Adam Ferguson. A huge thank you to our student crew who came out tonight and helped us with this game. Again, Monday, men and women's soccer, right here on the Sagu Sports Network.